What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today we are going to be spending a real day in the life with the brand new Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and we're actually using the front facing camera right now so the video quality and the audio quality that you see is coming directly from the camera but you guys are going to be spending a day with me and the phone and it's quarantine so you'll be seeing how a quarantine day with me goes nothing super exciting since we really don't take chances, especially with the baby around. But you'll see how the day goes with the phone nonetheless. So of course, we're going to be checking out all the things like the battery life, camera, features, all the good stuff. And it's actually about 11 a.m. right now, and I think we have 5% on the battery life. So really, really light usage, just on social media in the morning. That's about it so far. So of course, at the start of the day, we have to hit up the man cave and take a solid look at this Note 20 Ultra. So okay guys, we have to talk about the look and the design of the Note 20 Ultra. I actually really like it. This is a premium feeling device because it's a premium device, it costs a ton of money. We know that. But it's interesting though, it has this super, super huge camera hump in the back. I think it looks cool, it looks fine. With a case, you could probably make it go away. Now, I thought it was gonna be a problem when it came to something like wireless charging. Actually, it turns out that it's not so bad. We've got a wireless charger over here, which I'm going to plug in. And when you throw it down, it charges. So if you're concerned about the camera hump being too big, to throw on a wireless charger, which I was a little concerned about at first. Turns out it's just fine. Other than that though, it feels like a really solid phone in the hand. I definitely have no issues with it. What's nice though, guys, what's really nice is this textured back, which is kind of reminiscent of what we see on the iPhone 11 Pro, right Jay? Well, you would say that this feels like the same thing, right? Yeah, pretty much. And it doesn't really leave fingerprints. So oh, if, no, I mean, check that out. Oh no, Jay, I don't know what's on your fingers, man, but you leaving fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, I'm somebody who always leave fingerprints like everywhere, like it doesn't matter. Look at my keyboard, guys. Do you see that space bar? Always, I don't know what it is. I, maybe I got greasy fingers, it's weird. Don't judge me. I always leave fingerprints, but this one's not so bad. Now, the only other thing I wanna talk about in terms of like the design is this beautiful screen. It is a gorgeous looking screen, 6.9 inches, but I just wish, honestly, I just wish they would get rid of this curve. It's like very subtle now, it's very subtle, but like, let's just do like the Note 20 and just get rid of it. I don't know the benefit anymore. Companies are able to show off like, yeah, we can make our screens fold and bend, but like, is there really any value? Do, do regular people see the value in having those edges kind of tapered off to the side? I genuinely want to know in the comment down below, you guys. I guess one last thing to talk about in terms of design. This thing looks pink. They call it Mystic Bronze. Nah, man, this is like, this is like rose gold. If you're picking one up, go into a store, you'll see it for yourself. It leans definitely on the pink side of things. The Mystic White looks really, really good. It looks very promising, but they should have gave us the Mystic Green for the Note 20 Ultra. They should have, you dropped the ball, Samsung. Design-wise, this feels like a very premium device, which we all know it is. Samsung's material choices here are great, and it provides an awesome feel in the hand. But all right, now I gotta take my girl Cookie Monster to the groomers because she's been looking like a homeless dog. I'm gonna show you guys what she looks like right now. It's pretty rough. All right, guys, so this is our girl Cookie. Cookie, how you feeling, mama? Blind, can't really see over that hair. You got them bangs. So we're gonna get her all cleaned up. We'll see how cute she is when she gets back. Okay guys, so right now, we just dropped off Monster. You saw how crazy she was. And we are actually going to put some air in my tire. My front wheel needs a bit more pumping. So I'm going to the nearest Wawa to do it. About five minutes out, we're using the GPS. So I'm just gonna head there real quick, get some air and uh, We'll head back to go get her once she's done. All right, guys, so I was about to pump some air, but I figured it's been so long since I've driven this car. I literally have not driven this thing in months because Ari gets nervous when I'm in it and she doesn't want the baby in it, whatever. But it's been months since I've driven Kilua, so I'm going to go ahead and just like take a picture to remember the moment. My baby's not getting no love, so let me get a nice shot and see what we can, uh, pull off here with the Note 20 camera. Is that a dent on my car? Oh my God. That's heartbreaking. So it's got this frame over here so I can't really see directly under it. I guess this is an even better photo opportunity 
an unfortunate one, but I'm gonna take a picture of this dent and see if I can send it to like my guys who usually work on the car. Oh my God, this is breaking my heart. And then there's like a wider shot. Well, <laughs> shout out to that dynamic range and the reflection of the car hood, huh? Anyway, <laughs> that sucks, but um, still get, I'm gonna still get my picture. Jed's like sad now. My baby's still clean though. Maybe I just get a little bit closer. There we go. Whew. Still photographs well. Nice and sharp. Colors look good. Yo, I could throw this up on Instagram, like no edits. This is clean. Oh, and it's, and it's kind of cool because the auto settings can show that it's automatically detecting the AI, automatically detects that it's a car. How much of a difference does it make? Let's see, let's turn the setting off. Let's turn it on. I see like no difference. I mean, it's cool that it detected it, but it didn't help my picture much. Anyway, let me go ahead and get some air in these tires and then go get Cookie Monster. Guys, looky, looky, look who we have here. She's super duper cute again. Cookie, how you feel, mama? You're looking good. We're gonna have a little photo shoot when you get back with the Note 20, okay? She's like, yeah, whatever, dude. All right, guys, so we clearly have our beautiful subject over here, Cookie, and we're gonna take some pictures of her because how can we not, right? All right, Cookie, you ready? Sit. Good girl. Oh my goodness, this thing has some amazing depth of field. What? Hey, Cookie, you want a treat? You want a treat, mama? Yeah, that's the magic word. You want a treat. Yeah, okay. I see you. But you know, it's so crazy how much depth of field we're getting here. And we're not even in like the live focus mode. So let's try live focus. Oh, okay, that zooms in a lot. Take it a step back. So cloudy day, brightness outdoors feels pretty decent. You know, these screens get pretty bright. But for examining a picture, I would like it to be a little bit brighter. So when you're taking a picture, you want that depth of field to make it look real professional like. You guys can see it all around her. She's like the only thing in focus. With the live focus mode, it's exaggerated a bit. And I don't know, it doesn't even feel necessary. I feel like the original looks just, just fine. If I wanna add more focus, I can. So at least that's the benefit of live focus. You have some control over that depth of field and what it looks like afterwards. Uh, being at the groomers tuckered you out. And then just to see a quick video sample, the autofocus tracking is supposed to be improved on this as well. Now, I don't know if it's just me or if it's because I'm trying to see the quality of this video, but I feel like the screen isn't super bright right now. I keep trying to put the brightness up. I mean, if I just wanted to use the phone for casual stuff, the brightness seems just fine. But all right, let's take it inside. Your job is done, mama. And we're gonna get you a treat, okay? I'm gonna get that treat I keep talking about. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's check out this video here. It's crushing the autofocus. Cookie's staying in focus this whole time. It really is super contrasty. We're losing quite a bit of information in the darks. Like, these trees look super dark. Now, I might be keeping the overall image a bit darker so that things like Cookie, the sky, uh, this cushion over here isn't overexposed, but it is a little bit contrasty. That's one thing I just noticed. Still not mad at the quality, though. After spending some time with the camera, I gotta say, the photo quality is definitely on point. Just take a single look at the device and it screams, I should be able to take good pictures because of the huge camera bump. And I find that it does just that. I feel like the consistency with focus and overall quality gives it an edge over its older brother, the S20 Ultra. If you wanna get good pictures out of this guy, you'll definitely be able to pull it off. Dynamic range, sharpness, good color, it's all there. Now something else I wanna mention just really quickly is the 120 hertz display that's on the Note 20 Ultra. If you haven't upgraded your phone in a while, trust me, it is an awesome feature. Uh, basically what it is, is when you're scrolling through the menus and you're you know, tapping on all kinds of apps and you're just doing your regular everyday thing, it is just so, so much smoother. And some games take advantage of this as well. So when you're playing certain games, you get that higher refresh rate. Looks awesome. Now, 120 Hertz does play for some games, like we've got Injustice 2 over here, and it is clearly running at 120 Hertz. Uh, but when I play like one of my favorite games, Stragalia Lost, you guys have heard me talk about it. It just doesn't do the same thing. But when it does work, it is a beautiful thing. I've noticed that the only phones that truly make every 120 Hertz supported game run at 120 Hertz 100% of the time are like gaming phones. Maybe it's because this is, it's an adaptive 120 Hertz. So when it's applicable, it'll pop up versus 
just always being on. But for the average person who might not be a hardcore gamer, if you just want your phone to feel buttery smooth, I mean, with a phone like this that's really expensive, has high-end specs, you're gonna want that experience. You're gonna want it to be just really nice and buttery, and this definitely offers that. All right, y'all, taking a quick snack break. Peanut butter and jelly, you already know. This is like the best thing ever made. But yeah, we're watching God of High School over here. You know, I love me some anime. And we all know this, the screens on the Note or any Galaxy device always look really, really good. This one is no different. Not the easiest thing to kind of just lean over. At least not on a surface like this countertop because it kind of, it slides. Uh, but the screen itself, man, it looks so good. And the speakers are actually really legit. You hear that? So from a content consumption perspective, this thing is great, good screen, beautiful colors. It checks all the boxes easily. So now I'm gonna go back to eating my peanut butter and jelly. Ari just had one, I just made one for her. She probably scarfed it down already, so I'm ready to do mine. But we'll talk more about that screen later. I wanna finish this peanut butter and jelly. Mm. So when it comes to content consumption, this thing will give you the experience you expect from a phone at this price. The volume gets pretty loud, although we are working with pretty small speaker grills, so I do warn you guys that it's possible to muffle up the audio with a simple thumb in the wrong spot. So now let's talk about how powerful this phone is, right? It's got the latest Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. The operations that you do on the phone, like the actual games and browsers, all that stuff that you do on here, the phone will handle it with no problem. Like there's really nothing Thing that you can do that'll trip up a phone unless it's like a really really graphic intensive game or something like that but the note 20 has a new feature which i think really does show off the performance i've kind of talked about this in my previous video about the cool note 20 features if you haven't seen it i have it linked down below in the description but one of them is samsung dex now for those of you who aren't familiar with samsung dex basically you can plug your phone into like a monitor and get like a full computer desktop setup. You can attach a mouse and keyboard and all that good stuff to kind of make it work like a regular computer. But now the Note 20 takes it a step further and instead of having to plug this thing into a monitor, you can kind of just do it wirelessly with something like as common as a smart TV. So we've got my TV over here. I'm actually gonna try it out. I'm gonna turn on DeX. And what's cool is that it works with mini smart TVs. As you can see, I've got an LG TV that I set it up with before. And you know, Samsung LG, they're not exactly buddies. Um, but now we have the Samsung TV here. We're gonna start this. Let's hit allow. And boom, we're in. So now I pretty much have access to a full-blown computer right there from my TV. And it actually looks, looks pretty darn good. Now you might be wondering, how do you use this if you have your phone in your hand? Well, like I said, you can put a keyboard and mouse to it. I actually have the ability to use the screen as a touchpad. So now we can go ahead and use the screen like a trackpad. So I can just throw up a video and this is the desktop version. I can actually, look at that, that's a big old Judd face right there. Now is there, are there gestures? Oh, there's gestures. Oh, and then you see you have your little taskbar at the bottom. So you got multiple windows available, multiple apps. And think about this guys, think about this for a second. There's literally nothing connected to this. Some people will just brush over it like it's no big deal, but for professionals and you know students, I like this a lot. If you're gonna invest, what does it start at? Like 13, 13.99? 12.99. Is it 12.99? You know what? <laughs> Let's use our little computer over here. Open a new tab. Oh, and then our keyboard automatically pops up. 12.99. Didn't you say that, Jay? Mm -hmm. So at that price, you should be able to do something like this because you're, you're spending laptop money on this, guys. So being able to have a desktop built into your phone, I think is really, really dope. So like I said, the power is there. Dex is actually really impressive to me, especially considering you can still use the phone to do anything you want while using it. I wouldn't be surprised to see this feature come to the older S20 line though at some point. So I'm not really sure if this is gonna be a special feature to the Note for long. All right, so I was on Amazon real quick searching for something and let me tell you guys, when it comes to taking screenshots, I'm the worst. I don't know why for some reason, I know it's just power button, volume down. And you know, you take your screenshot, but I always somehow mess it up. Thankfully, in that demonstration, I nailed it. What's cool about this phone is that the S Pen, it pops up a little menu whenever you pull it out. And there's a smart select feature. 
which I personally like because you can basically take a screenshot just using the pen. You got your outline, allow, and boom. I love that, especially because I'm the kind of guy who doesn't like to just send the full screenshot. I like to kind of crop it in, make sure I'm only sending what's important. So this feature for me, I think is dope. Now there's like a ton more you can do with the S Pen. They've got like air gestures and stuff so you can take pictures with just like the wave of the pen and you flip different camera settings and all kinds of cool stuff. It's got even some really cool note taking abilities. Uh, if you guys wanna hear more about that, that, that video I talked about, go ahead and watch that. But yeah, it's got a lot of cool stuff. Honestly, not anything that I necessarily need that much. What I find works for me is that smart select feature. And if I wanted to do anything else, like maybe sign some contracts, which is something I definitely do use it for, I have that option, but that's pretty much as far as it goes for me personally. Now, obviously this thing is like the selling feature of the note, uh, but you know, everyone's different but it's cool that it's there and it's cool that you can do so many different things with it if you need to. So today we pretty much went over everything that makes the Note the Note, from the S Pen to performance, not to mention the battery life is solid too. I ended up getting about six hours on a heavy day like you saw, and I'd say the six hour range is pretty standard for me, running the phone at 1080p at 120 hertz. Now, do I recommend this phone? If you pick it up, I'm sure you'll enjoy the experience, but I do warn you, you're really paying for that Note name and things that come with it like the S Pen. If you don't see yourself using the pen and its features as much, something in the Note 20 line might be more up your alley if you still want that Samsung experience. $1,300 is a hefty price to pay to not make full use of what you have in front of you. It's a great phone, but at the price, you gotta make sure it's worth it especially considering all the cheaper alternatives that are out there right now. But till next video, guys, this is your average consumer. Peace.